No theater is the beginning of all the other performing arts in Japan. Every aspect of the No performance uh, is based on something called johaku, which is a principle uh, where you start very slowly and it gradually develops and then there's a very quick ending which cycles back into the beginning again. So you have johaku and then you have johaku and you have johaku. When I was at the University of Michigan, the professor, who was very fluent in, in Japanese and in Japanese culture, was standing up at the front of the stage and did a small no demonstration. That was my first exposure to actually studying no. I think it was called that time traditional no training um, in Japan. So I was able to get funding to go over there. And actually, I, that's the first time that I met Uraka Sensei, and without him, I would have no access to no in any way. <laughs> My first project was a script that I wrote at the University of Michigan as part of my master's degree. And later I got a Canada Council grant to develop this into film and into live performance as well. And uh, that's The Fisherman's Wife. It's my core play and, and very much more um, concerned or, or integrated with the traditional no than the other ones are. The no structure to me offers a very different way of working from the way that we're accustomed to working on film and theater in the West. Um, by that I mean that um, the normal type of film that we watch or, or piece of theater that we watch tends to be plot-based. That is, we're, we're uh, following a kind of linear structure based on a plot where things happen in a kind of cause and effect. Personally, I think that film and the no are quite similar. Um, they may not seem to be on the surface, but I think they're very similar mediums. Um, first of all, there's the obvious thing that film is based on, on a principle of framing. And the no also is structured on what are called shodan, which are uh, short segments that are then put together in a kind of framing sequence. One other thing is that um, the no actor himself is like a, a camera, in the sense that he's looking through one hole in his mask, um, and so he's, he's looking as if he's looking right through a camera lens, and I'm trying to capture that with my character that has the headpiece with the camera lens. The premise of the entire five plays is that the world no longer exists, that, that um, the environment was destroyed to such a degree that it just isn't here anymore, we're not here anymore. The whole story is based on greed, on, on wanting more and more and more, and in the end everything is taken away from you. So that's the basic principle of The Fisherman's Wife. It's the old man who is, is wanting to take more and more from the environment and the woman who, as a personification of nature and the trees in the forest, is constantly and very generously giving him what he asks for. He asks for wood, he asks for trees to, to build a log cabin, he asks for pulp from the trees to make paper, he asks for wood for the bridges, and on and on until the point where uh, it's no longer possible for her to give to him anymore, and he's refused what he what he asks for. Into the rippling mirror. My approach to the environment in these screenplays derives out of a deep sadness that I feel for the loss of the environment, and really, I don't know of any other art form than the no to be able to to portray that uh, that depth, that profundity of a sense of loss. 
have turned to